everybody, welcome back, Mr. G again. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at an example of Norton's equivalent theory. So solving for Norton's equivalent circuit. So I've got an original circuit here and what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into its equivalent which kind of looks like this. So Norton's equivalent, it focuses on a current supply as opposed to Thevenin's which is a voltage supply. So this current supply divides current down this and this resistor. So we have Norton's equivalent resistance here and then our load. So again Norton's circuit, if you remember from our lecture, Norton's circuit is a current source not a voltage source in the equivalent circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and solve this. But before we solve this as a group, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go ahead and pause the camera so and give this a try by yourself. Now we have notes again from our textbook. So our textbook is Principles of Electric Circuits, Conventional Current Flow, David Buckla. You can find notes on Norton's at chapter 8-6. Also, Online on Blackboard, you've got your lesson notes. There's a procedure for solving Norton's circuits. So go ahead and pause your camera now, and then we'll come back and we'll compare your answer to mine. All right, welcome back. So hopefully you had some success and you came up with your version of what you believe Norton's circuit should look like for this example. So what we're going to do is we are going to solve it together. So first of all I am going to calculate R Norton. Now remember doesn't matter which of these calculations you do first, R Norton or I Norton, they are completely independent of each other. Therefore, it does not matter which you do first. So I'm going to just take a second and copy over our original circuit. And I recommend that you do the same thing so that when you are actually working on the circuit, you always have the original to go back to during your calculations. So here's a copy of the original 10 volts, 4K, 10K. This is where our load is in this example. We have 2K, we have 3K, 1K is going to be over here, and 5K. All right. So calculating R Norton. So that is R Norton. Nice thing is, is R Norton is actually the exact same thing as R Thevenin. So therefore, the procedure we've used to calculate R Thevenin is the same procedure we use now to calculate R Norton. So here's what we do. The first thing is to remove the load. So again, I recommend that you redraw the circuit each time so that you don't get confused because it does happen. So there's the 4K, there's the 5K. 1K, 3K, 2K, and 10 volts. Right here is where the load resistor was. So what we're going to do is we remove the load resistor. Where do we put it? We put it right here, 10 kilo ohms. Okay, because that's where it belongs. So we take it out of this circuit and we put it into the equivalent. Step two is to mark this A and B. So once that resistor is removed, 
where the resistor came from, you mark it A and B. The next step is to short out the supply. So get rid of the power supply. So just again, put a line through it, pretend it's not even there. If you were to build this circuit now and find the value of resistance from A to B, that is equal to resistance Norton. So what we need to do is we need to look at this circuit and we need to look at it from A to B. What is the resistance of this circuit? So when we look at that, the resistance from A to B is actually this in series with this, in series with this, in series with this. So we end up with 2K in parallel with 3K, in series with 1K, in series with 5K, in series with 4K. And what that works out to be is this works out to be 1.2K plus 1K plus 5K plus 4K. And if we add all of those numbers up, it comes to 11.2 kilo ohms. So the resistance from A to B is 11.2 kilo ohms in this circuit. That is Norton's resistance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our original back and here we go. We're gonna put 11.2K here, 11.2 kilo ohms. So that is solving for R Norton. Now we're going to solve for I Norton. Got to remember again that R Norton has absolutely nothing to do with I Norton. They are their own separate calculation. So you always go back to the original circuit. Always go back to the original circuit for the brand new calculation. So the steps to find I Norton are as follows. So what we're going to do is we are going to remove the load. So here is where the load used to be. So here is our power supply. And we have here the 2K, the 3K, the 1K, the 5K, the 10 volts, and the 4K. So now we've removed the load. Again, we mark it AB. The procedure for I Norton says once we have the load removed, marked it AB, then we're going to short A to B. So where that resistor was, you're replacing a short, so that wire right there. If we are able to calculate the current going through that wire, that current is I Norton. So the current going through that wire is I Norton. So what we've done is remove the load marked at AB and created a short circuit from A to B. If we were actually able to figure out what the current is going through that little wire, that would be Norton's current. So in this case, if you look at the circuit, current would leave the supply, travel around, split here, come back together here, and then travel through that wire on its way back to the supply. So for this example, for this example, I Norton is equal to I total of that circuit. So if I built that circuit and I put an amp meter there, I would measure I total. If I built that circuit, put an amp meter there, that is also I Norton. 
So for this example, we're going to find out that I total is equal to I Norton. So in order to calculate I total, we can use Ohm's law, and Ohm's law says that V total divided by R total. So V total is 10 volts. R total, we've got these resistors. So R total, let's figure it out over here. R total of the circuit is equal to, we've got 5K plus 1K plus, we've got these two things in parallel, so that's 2K in parallel with 3K plus, 4K. We had already calculated before that if we take a 2K and a 3K and put them in parallel, we get 1.2K. So this is actually 1.2K. So we got 5K plus 1K plus 1.2K plus 4K. And that gives us so we got 5K plus 1K plus 1.2K plus 4K equals 11.2K. So that would be 11.2K. So. 11.2K. So now this goes up here at 11.2K and we have 10 divided by 11.2K equals 0.89 milliamps. 0.89 milliamps. So, in this particular case, we've got I Norton equal to 0.89 milliamps. So I'm going to go all the way over here and say that I Norton is equal to 0.89 milliamps. So that's our calculation. Now we're going to see if the calculation is true. So what we've got here is a circuit where that current will be divided and split into those two. We want to calculate the current going through that one. So if we did that, easiest way is to use the current divider formula. So I of our RL, so current flowing through there, is equal to I total and this would be R total of the circuit and this would be RL. So I, R total of the circuit in this case, so R total of the Norton circuit is the 11K so the 11.2K in parallel with the 10K. And we'll figure that out. So 11.2K times 10K divided by 11.2K plus 10K equals... 5.28K, so 5.28K, so that works out to be 0.89 milliamps, and on the top is 5.28K, on the bottom is 10K, and we can figure that all out. Simple calculation. So 5.28 divided by 10 equals times 0.89 milliamps equals 0.89 
we got point four so we'll say four six nine milliamps so the current through the load right now is point four six nine milliamps or 469 microamps. If we wanted to find the voltage across the load, so the voltage across the load is the current IRL times the actual load resistor itself. So that would be 10K and this is 0.469 milliamps. So 0.469 milliamps times 10k the voltage is 4.69 volts so that's what we get for Norton's let's see if we get the same values with that resistor so again, we have to find the current going through that resistor and then the voltage drop across it and compare with what we have here. So the current going through there, if you look again, it's I total. So what we need to do is we need to calculate I total for this circuit, which is equal to V total, which is divided by R total. So that becomes 10 volts divided by something. And what that something is, our total is equal to 5K plus 1K plus those two again. So that becomes 1.2K plus 10K plus 4K. And that all works out to be 5 plus 1 plus 1.2 plus 10 plus 4 equals 21.2k 21.2 kilo ohms so 21.2 kilo ohms so we got 10 volts divided by 21.2 kilo ohms equals 0.47 milliamps 0.47 milliamps. 0.47 milliamps. Look at that. Then, if we take, we're looking for now the voltage across RL. The voltage across RL is the current through RL times RL. We get 0.47 milliamps times 10 kilo ohms. And that gives us 4.7 volts. Look at that. The two match. So hopefully that matches your answer. If not, here's the work on how it was done. So there's our calculations. There is the final answers. There is the proof. So that's Norton's example number one. I hope that helps. Everybody please take care and we'll see you again next time.